Disclaimer, I do not dislike CinemaSins, and that is not a lie. For my next Everything Wrong with CinemaSins video, I'm going to be seeing a video on Ratchet & Clank, and I'd like to give thanks to Acations to Tears or Rose and Ongoing the Gamer for requesting this video. Enjoy the video, everyone. Comcast. Pointing things out on the screen. Reminder, as we send this full minute of logos, this movie was so bad that it killed both the PlayStation Originals and the recently revived Gramercy brands. Killed them dead! Took PlayStation three years to respawn as PlayStation Productions after this travesty. Okay, but you're just telling us a fact here, so... I was gonna do this fun thing where I awarded these sassy meta subtitles that wink to the audience a number of gold bolts based on how funny they are, but heads up, they all suck. Well, that's just your opinion, so I'll give this my award. Take that? If you please. Victor is standing on the other side of this door for who knows how long, just on the off chance that he's summoned. This is weird, because for the rest of the movie, he's leading an army or firmly at the side of, um, well, whoever this guy is, who seems to be important, but whose name I still don't know because the movie wanted to open with that hilarious cell phone bit. Well, his name is Chairman Drek, and he's important because he is dismantling planets in order to create his new artificial planet. Mommy! Dialing mother. Oh, f you, movie. These voice command things always need you to push a button first or say, hey, Google, or some sh but this isn't the real world we're talking about here, so I don't think that that kind of point really matters. I think we're supposed to know how evil this guy is now that his discount Death Star has exploded a space marble, but I know nothing about that planet yet. All I felt was a minor disturbance in the farce, as if millions of voices may or may not have cried out in terror and were probably silenced or not. Well, all you really need to know here is that this is how Chairman Drek is destroying the planets in order to create his new artificial planet. Stylized C is not a ratchet, it's a wrench. So this movie should be called Wrench It and Clank, and I hate myself. First of all, Jeremy sends himself cliche. Second of all, that's how the logo has looked for some of the games, such as the 2002 video game that this movie is based on. Planet Tenemule is no more. Also, news position of a thing that we literally just saw happen and didn't need exposition for. Sure, we, the audience, already knew about that, but the inhabitants of Planet Velden didn't already know, hence Ratchet being informed here. Also, also, we're thousands of years in the future, in who knows what galaxy, and yet there's still a concept of an Earth-style news broadcast. And suits! Well, in the original dreadlocked game, Dallas Wanamaker was an anchorman on Vox News, and he looked like this, so... Our next stop, Planet Veldin's Kizzle Plateau. Well, you look at that! Our hero just so happens to be watching the news when it just so happens that his idol will just so happen to be recruiting, not just on his home planet, but in his damn neighborhood. Narration. I think there's been a mistake. I came in to get my ejector seat repaired. How does one discover that their ejector seat is faulty, but also live to get it repaired? I would assume that that's because the ejector seat didn't eject at some point in the past. Look at these waterfalls, the fjords, the rolling hills of Corvoxian snodgrass. Movie thinks it's hilarious to just make up funny words that don't actually mean anything. Fjords? Come on. Uh, Jeremy, fjord actually is a word. So before assuming something's a mistake, maybe think for a moment and do a Google search if you think you need to. But we don't have any forces. You let me worry about that. In two days' time, the Galactic Rangers will be destroyed? The evil villain doesn't share the plan with their evil henchmen because he doesn't want the audience to know said plan yet. But what you're not showing is that Chairman Jack was talking about a plan to strike the Galactic Rangers and get rid of them altogether. So now is probably a good time to give out my award again. Look, you're a great mechanic. You got a lot of heart, but you're careless. The fact that the movie somehow snagged Paul Giamatti and John Goodman is a lesson in not gilding the... What's the opposite of a lily? Also careless? More like oblivious and dangerously negligent. I feel like that's the same as being careless, Jeremy. You want to know mechanics advice? Dream smaller. It leads to less disappointment. Kind of reminds me of the first Valentine. Next. First off, it's always summer. We live in a desert. Holy sh did Netflix cancel the other three seasons? Jeremy says something random, cliche. Why are the Galactic Rangers having their tryouts here? Do they think they will find their chosen one on a tiny desert planet? Because earlier in the film, Captain Quark said that Planet Veldin's Kaisel Plateau was their next stop. When President Fironix recommended I take on a new ranger, I knew just where to go. An oblivious, chiseled space ranger? Is there a single character in this thing that isn't cribbed from a larger Disney property? Well, in the games, Captain Quark is a space superhero, so... Built using the finest raritanium in the galaxy. Raritanium? Is there a single item in this thing that isn't cribbed from a larger Disney property? Except raritanium is another thing from the game, so again, you should think before coming to a conclusion, Jer. Oh my. C-3PO2? Really? Is there a single line that isn't cr- Eh, probably more of a reference to Star Wars, Jeremy. What? Ratchet's luck is unbelievable here. Not only were the rangers in his town at the perfect time, but now Clank randomly crash lands in his backyard and Ratchet is the only person who sees it. Narration. 
No vector shell damage. Sister board appears to be intact. Ratchet is apparently able to diagnose this alien robot with a purely external visual inspection. Yeah. So? Apologies. I have not been able to locate your species in my database. And then he scrolls through what I'm guessing are a few Easter egg characters from other PlayStation properties. But considering I don't celebrate PlayStation Easter, these just feel like the movie putting a big flashing sign on an inside joke I'm missing out on. And you could have figured that out by doing a simple Google search, which is something for other movies you've sinned, like Moana. This entire scene is underscored by the Blue Danube waltz because it's public domain, don't have to pay. Singing in a video cliche. Your weapon package includes a mag booster. I am rewriting the software to isolate the rare titanium alloy used to manufacture us. Oh, for the love of ICP, that is not how magnets work. Again, it's cartoon logic, Jeremy, and you've admitted in the past that you know the cartoons don't follow real world rules, so you should know that's the case here too. Super suits that form perfectly to your eyelids. Pointing things out on the screen. Captain Quark, Dallas Wanamaker here. How the f*** did Dallas get here so quickly? And wasn't he the anchor for the breaking news at the beginning? Why would the anchor also be the street reporter? Once you get that cushy anchor chair under your ass, your time beating the pavement is over. Like in other videos, you're asking for extra information that doesn't need to be explained, and doing so would slow down the movie's runtime. Let's get you into your new proto-suit. Please don't let it be nanotech. Please don't let it be nanotech. F***ing nanotech bullshit. So what's the point of this sin then, Jeremy? The Alpha Disruptor fires a deadly stream of plasma. This weapon's position goes on for all the some time. As if the movie being terrible wasn't enough to remind us it was based on a video game. First of all, those that participate in the source material already know that this movie is based on video games, and those who don't. Second of all, not every video game movie out there is considered terrible by everyone like these three movies. I don't mind it as much as the last guy who had this job. Whose picture I keep up as a dartboard in case I need to do a reveal like this. Pointing things out on the screen. Believe me, I could do this all day. Insert clip of Chris Evans saying what the sh here. Hilarious, coming from the guy who sends movies for pop culture references all the time. Draws plan and crayon to emphasize he's an idiot. Still manages to put in a fancy PowerPoint to completely undermine the point. Sending something you like. I find this arrangement slightly embarrassing. As well you should, as I have now stopped keeping track of the other media you're ripping off. Well again, it's probably just a reference to Star Wars, especially since Clank is similar to R2-D2. Remember, your thrusters are powered by Ratchet's suit, so don't try any solo flights, okay? Hmm, I wonder if the only piece of reminder advice she gives will have to be broken to save the day. It won't? Now then, what the hell is this scene here for? So the Clank knows how his thrusters work and what not to do. I'm in. Any sign of Drek? Other than this entire movie? I don't quite get what this sin is here. If you're seeing the movie because you don't like it, I'll say that I do know that people don't like this movie, but that's just your opinion, Jer. Zircons! Is a word that means nothing to me. Zircons are a group of synthenoids in the video games, which you could have figured out by simply looking it up on Google. The idea is to get Captain Quark on his own, so that he could be corrupted. But how did Drek know that he'd end up here, or be separated from the team? Again, you're asking for extra information that would just slow down the movie's runtime if it tried to explain it. She wouldn't drop him, would she? No, she's just going to continue to let him go on about unimportant things for as long as it takes for the movie to cut back to her. So you two can have this inane conversation. Actually, shortly after this part, she does actually drop him, making him reveal the rest of the targets. Dear child, I've been having the mood swings again. Futuristic keypads that don't tell you what buttons you're pushing. But I'm sure the characters can figure out what they do, since movie was showing text like this earlier, such as with the news. Also, narrating your diary as you write it, as if you know there's an audience to keep entertained. Uh, he said that was a journal, not a diary. And yes, Greg, I kind of was quoting you there. Okay, this sin removal goes out to the movie acknowledging every kid and adult that snuck around the house for some well-earned gaming time, only to wake the entire damn house because the TV magically jacks up the volume whenever you turn it on after midnight. It's nice to be seen. Actually, that was the PS1 startup sound, and I'll play both sounds so that you know which is which. Get me a hollow scan of that ship. I have this weird instinct that I need to see something on there to drive the plot forward. Yeah, so? Thunder smack, equipped. Oh, f you. There did not just so happen to be a fucking storm gun on hand just as you find out the big robot's weakness is water. But that's exactly what just happened in the movie. Also, I did not anticipate adding signs to the list of movies this film is ripping off, accidentally or otherwise, but here we are. <sighs> You're nothing but a pathetic defense. Perhaps. 
but I am waterproof. The only thing more annoying than how long it takes this thunder weapon to actually create rain is how quickly Victor rusts once the rain delay is over. Well, that's just how you feel about it, so this will be getting my award as well. Robots with lungs. Pointing things out on the screen. Can I switch sides now? Orgy complainers. Jeremy makes an inappropriate comment, cliche. I never had a proper planet. I spent my formative years underground. Drex's motivation for destroying millions of lives and going through all the effort of destroying and rebuilding planets is because he was raised in a cave? Is that all? No, that's not all. Is There's also the fact that Chairman Drex's planet Core 2 has become uninhabitable due to pollution. Also, what does the happily ever after look like here? How the f*** does he intend to hide the planet once he's created it? You do know that the new planet Umbris gets destroyed later, right? Can I come in? Hiring John Goodman for your movie and then abandoning him for more than half the runtime. They offered you a chance to have John Goodman and you blew it! But this isn't the first animated movie where John Goodman had a supporting role, as that was also the case with The Princess and the Frog. I thought I might find you here. You mean the place he works, lives, and sleeps? Yeah. So? It was not a complete disaster. Authorities are calling it a complete and utter disaster. News position jokes. See the previous sin. I might have an idea. But instead of immediately telling you about it, I'm going to pause dramatically for a scene transition. Pointing things out on the screen. Sheepinator. One of my personal favorites. Someone apparently intended the Heinz Doofenshmirtz school of naming your weaponry. Except the Sheepinator was first introduced in the Going Commando game, which released four years before Phineas and Ferb aired. When Ratchet exposes the stabilizer, it can quickly be disconnected. In case you thought Alaris was narrating the plan, and then we'd see all the action and tension of actually doing the plan, let me relieve you of that notion. She's literally narrating the actual infiltration. Just a few shots of everything going the way she says it is, and we're past the big plan. But this has happened before in movies, such as in the Lego movie. This isn't you, and you know it! Convenient cork collector's card of self-reflection literally smack cork on the audience, upside the head. Narration. Again. You called me king of the nerd herd! Chuck Erasure. Jeremy says something random cliche. What's happening? Well, whatever gravity simulator you have in this space vessel is apparently affected by the relative physical location of your longitudinal, lateral, and vertical axis. Basic yeah, that's what's happening in the movie here. Meet the rhino, as in rip you a new one. A new what? PG-rated kids movie? Rip me a new what, exactly? A new missile, since that's what the rhino fires. I'm not going to commit to which, but at least 17 of Newton's laws of motion are being violated by Ratchet's spine not being pivoted out of his body by this rescue. Taking an animated movie at face value, yet again cliche. What are you doing? Improvising. Judd Apatow movies. Jeremy says something random cliche. Also, f*** you if you think I'm staying through these credits. <laughs> I'm out of here. Well, not everyone stays through credits anyway, Jer. And here's the end result, everybody. This is until it was 308, and the sentence will be turned into a sheep. Thank you for watching, everybody, and have a nice day.